Hello YouTube, my name is Vajnav Diaz and welcome to another Super Smash Brothers Ultimate uh, speculation video. This time, not really speculation, so let's, let's talk about it. This time, it's going to be about the Super Smash Ballad that happened in 2015 from April to October. Now, before we get on with this, I've heard that the ballad supposedly was rigged in the favor of Bayonetta, that Bayonetta got in, no matter what, that something makes people believe that uh, that the ballot was rigged two weeks into it that's when Bayonetta's development began now unless I've seen too little which I probably did the only thing I could find regarding the ballot being uh, a high-stakes robbery like some people have claimed to be or you know too much of, um, of, a, of a rigged system was not really too much was only that two slots were added or three slots were added to the Smash Brothers uh, database or uh, the, the, the Smash Brothers codes one next to Zero Suit Samus one for Cloud uh, one, and two next to Ike these to me scream nothing this just to me just screams people looking at something and ex extrapolating De being like they added the three characters so they knew the, cap the, the development began at that point in time Here's the thing, if development me began at that point in time, that would mean that Cloud took, uh, so that would be six months before the ballot ended, that would have been in early May, that would put Cloud at a development cycle of roughly eight months, while Bayonetta and Corrin took two more months, so a ten month development cycle for each of these characters, which is around the time that each character takes to develop when it comes to Super Smash Bros. when every character is being worked on at the same time. But not for the DLC. Re uh, remember, Smash Brothers U came out in November. Mewtwo, at the time, at the very least in October 2014, was the only DLC character being worked on. So, the possibility of other characters outside of Mewtwo taking roughly the same time was very unlikely. And uh, Ryu would have taken at the very least, at the minimum one would have been, or maximum one, would have been seven months of development. So, I don't see how Cloud would take more time in development. Same thing for Bayonetta. Although they had some complexities to them, uh, Ryu does have a little bit of different work going into it. So, I don't see the ballot being rigged based on, do it, on these two things. Besides, outside of uh, Corrin and Cloud having swords, there's nothing to suggest that they were put there. Even if they were put there, even if those things are evidence, that doesn't, um, these slots were evidence that like they already had the characters planned out. I mean, the only thing that Corrin has in similar with Cloud and Ike, and Cloud with Ike and Corrin, is a sword. And yeah, Corrin was planned from the beginning. I don't think anybody doubted that. He was not a ballot pick, unless I missed something and they announced him as a ballot character. From everything that I heard was that, yeah, Bayonetta was the ballot pick, and Corrin was just a pick that Sakurai wanted, or Nintendo wanted to promote the game. So with that out of the way, let's actually talk about characters that could very well be for Super uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate, even if the ballot did not influence the, Nint the, the Nintendo's picks for uh, Brawl, for Brawl, for Smash Brothers 4 DLC, it obviously influenced Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. For example, we have in fact a cast of characters, be it assist trophies or playable characters, that were clearly that clearly came from the ballot. Shovel Knight as an assist trophy alongside Bomberman are clear examples of Nintendo putting it, or Sakurai taking those characters from the ballot because both of them were most likely very high up there. But since Konami was gonna get uh, with this whole thing of everyone's here konami getting a character uh, in snake and then another one in simon because let's be honest the belmonts had much more of a moveset potential than bomberman or an easier one easier one um would would obviously facilitate the fact that both of the the belmonts would be here but then we also have more characters characters that for example i think there's four characters that would have never made it never made it into super smash brothers as playable without the Smash Brothers ballot. That would have been Dark Samus, Chrome, Richter and King K. Rool. Always King K. Rool was always a likelihood and everybody was going to predict them but it had been three games since, his, uh, since people have been requesting him and he never got in and the only, uh, uh, the only time he appeared in the games was as a trophy. He never even was an assist trophy, he was just a trophy. And then obviously 
he was an, a costume for Mies in Smash 4, but as DLC, so, you know, that was always the thing. And then obviously Simon and, Rick, uh, and, and Ridley were always likely characters, that's why I say that Richter wasn't as likely. Uh, Dark Samus and Chrom, for obvious reasons, Chrom already, had the, his game had passed, and Dark Samus was an assist trophy and would always be just a clone and egg. Heck, that's what she ended up being, she ended up being an Echo Fighter, which is still, still pretty cool. So. In this video, I'm going to also discuss now this next part will be about the characters that might be in as ballot picks and also uh, being not just from like they're not in yet or haven't been announced yet or haven't been showcased yet because some of these would already be probably shown given um, the speculation surrounding them and the fact they've already been in Smash. Okay, so let's get before talking about all the characters not in and all that, let's get the elephant out of the room. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, I should say, which is Goku. Yes, Goku most likely got a lot of votes in the ballot, just like Shrek and just like everybody else. But please, let the meme die. Goku is a stupid meme, just let it die. The character is not going to be in Smash, the character doesn't even deserve to be in Smash. Goku has left zero impressions in the gaming industry. And let's be completely honest, you remove the Dragon Ball manga and the Dragon Ball anime, and nobody would give two rats asses about the Dragon Ball video games. Outside of Super or, or, or uh, Fighters, no single Dragon Ball game has ever been that good. And most of them have just been okay. And even if, for whatever reason, Sakurai drank from your crazy Kool-Aid juice and decided Goku will be in Smash, he still would not be in Smash. Because the people that own him have never made or allowed Goku or whatever what the company called is jump something or the jump group they have never allowed Goku or any of its franchises crossover with things not a part of their franchise and before you say but it's Smash Brothers they would make the exception would they why would they because Smash is big they don't give a crap about that if they had given a crap about that, I can guarantee you that there are companies out there that would have loved to put in, to make a game with Goku in it that also would have uh, Marvel characters or um, DC characters. Heck, who, <laughs> tell me, tell me this, you really think that um, the Injustice developers in Realms did not try to get Goku in the game? I mean, they have the Ninja Turtles. They have other guest characters, Mortal Kombat as well, and they never, and you're telling me they never tried to get uh, Frieza, for example, these characters are iconic everywhere that people would love to play with them or play as them and they never cross over with anything outside of the jump thing. So yeah, I don't think that Goku is that like a, likely of a character, even if for whatever reason Sakurai decided to throw everything that makes Smash great in the first place, which is a celebration of Nintendo games and video games in general and just throw it out the garbage. By the way, another thing that people use to defend Goku's inclusion as to non-video game characters being in, which is the Melee and uh, 64's development time or development. Let's not get into that. Melee and 64 were, development, were developed in very specific circumstances. 64 could not even be, almost was not made, so let's not even get into like why third parties were not a part of it. And Melee was intended to have third parties in, which is what people justify as possible for Goku, as like third parties were not going to be in the games, and then uh, Snake and Sonic appeared. Despite the fact that Melee wanted to, uh, in Melee they wanted to put third parties, they just didn't have the time because of development, of a, a rush in development. So, now that we've gotten that little elephant out of the way let's talk about characters that would probably do well in the smash ballot that haven't yet been announced or discussed really in uh for smash brothers or they still haven't been announced so let's start off with the two obvious ones in isabel and and uh, shadow that were in smash 4 uh as assist trophies shadow even being an assist trophy in brawl both of them appear to have been uh uh replaced in uh, Super Smash Bros. Assist Trophy Realm, so it's possible that they were replaced with um, with Knuckles and uh, with Cap'n. It's possible, it seems likely, both of them would be echoes of the, the Villager and, uh, Sh and Sonic. Shadow might even have a different up B and a different running animation. I also think Isabel would most likely have a different up B. It would be weird to see her with the balloon things. And again, it would be weird to see her fight, so, you know. 
uh, still I think these two are off the list are like the most likely ones so let's uh, move on to the three characters the other three characters outside of those two that I think are very likely to be in this game there are Gino, Skull Kid and Isaac uh, I believe all three have had references to them. I believe uh, what was it? I think it was Bowser that has a brand uh, has a song in his in his video uh, character trailer uh, that is from Super Mario uh, RPG. So the game Gino comes from. So people are taking that as a hint. That is a little bit of a stretch, but it wouldn't shock me. The ballot most likely had him pretty high up there, and Sakurai already said that he had to. It was a very difficult process getting Simon Belmont and Richter Belmont into Super Smash Brothers, so I wouldn't be shocked if he also went into uh, um, Square Enix and twisted a few arms to get Gino into the game. Then we have Skull Kid and Isaac, both of them have been teased to some extent, the Isaac with the Isaac with the Golden Sun style picture for uh, the Raffle Assist Trophy and Skull Kid with uh, the Moon apparently replacing him in the Assist Trophy realm and the whatever what was it what was it what was it the, the 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 theme of sakurai's room looking like it could be referencing skull kid skull kid recently appeared in hyrule warrior so there definitely isn't any missing material there then another character that was teased in the nintendo direct would be dixie at the end of the king k rule trailer king k rule traps uh, donkey kong and diddy kong which is the setup for uh, Donkey Kong Country 3, so it's very likely that Dixie might make an appearance. It will make sense for her to be in it. Uh, she's highly requested and she would be uh, an Echo Fighter for Diddy. So, you know, it's actually a character that would not surprise me to be there. Uh, two, I have three more characters to talk about, so let's talk about the first one, which would be Bantanda Waddle D. Uh, this one actually was hang ranked pretty high in the Smash uh, polls that uh, S Source Gaming did, I believe he was number 4 on that list. So he did pretty well and it does seem like we are we haven't seen a Kirby character, a, a brand new Kirby character in a while. The last Kirby character added was uh, Meta Knight and King DDD in Super Smash Bros. 4, not 4, Brawl, we haven't had any new ones in uh, 4 when we haven't seen anything for it in Smash Four or Smash Four, Smash Ultimate. So what will be? But then what will be would be pretty interesting. He is basically now the toad of the franchise, except he actually has a weapon, and he's more diverse and different from the other Kirby characters. And he would have a spear, which would be very interesting to see in Smash Brothers. That'd be real cool. Then we have the other character. The, the other two characters are third parties. One of them is an indie in Shantae, with Shovel Knight being an assist trophy. I think that Shantae's. Um, uh, progression has risen or possibility has risen because I think again I mentioned this in the uh, the video that's coming up tomorrow about the leaks and not the leaks the, the teases and the hints originally it was going to be teases hints and rumors but and leaks but unfortunately that video went went for almost 30 minutes and it was recorded before this one it went for almost 30 minutes so I had to cut some things out and that was one of them I had to record out rumors and leaks and what I discussed about the the smash ballot is that let's assume for a minute that the smash ballot got for 4 million people voted during the smash ballot uh, which is very likely we had six months to vote assuming that most people uh, assuming that every single person on that voted twice which didn't happen a lot of people voted more than two, more than more than two times i for example voted five times if i'm not mistaken i think i did vote four five times and that would mean that ev there were eight million votes if shovel knight gathered half a million votes and shantae 350 i would wager that sakurai would go or the smash team would go with shantae over shovel knight even though shovel knight was over shantae in the overall polls reason for that is uh, to me it's 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 simply because in 2015 we did not know where Shovel Knight was gonna go after the after his game. Uh, the game was very good and it's still very good and he has gotten great expansions. But Shovel Knight in and on itself has been appearing everywhere and the character itself, although iconic in a way, is also have, have they haven't done much since. They have done obviously expansions to the Shovel Knight game but they haven't released Shovel Knight 2, we haven't seen Shovel Knight in a new game, the character is kind of stagnating a little bit. His popularity probably is the, as, as well as it was before but it's still very much just, you know, a, he's just another indie. We have have indie, indies that have risen in this uh, time away 
we what was it i think it was when around the time of the switch launch we knew we had we had uh, sales data for every system and i believe it was overall just shy of a million units sold i think i could be wrong um but still i think sh and, and with shante having more of a, a history with nintendo and being a more story character around for longer maybe and obviously this is just speculation and i'm pulling shit out of my ass but it's still a possibility you know it's still likely that it that could have happened and the final character that i want to talk about today in this video regarding the smash battle would be banjo and kazooie now this one is a very interesting one because it's a third party that is owned by microsoft you know the company that owns the xbox one platform which is technically speaking in competition with nintendo and the Nintendo Switch. Now, sh although they're owned by Microsoft, Microsoft or Phil Spencer has said that he's actually okay and a lot with a lot of the characters to show up in Smash. But I don't still don't think the characters would show up in Smash. There's a very small likelihood in my mind that they would. Although Sakurai did say that he twisted a few arms to get uh, Simon Belmont and Richter Belmont into the game. I think that this situation is a little bit different because since Benjamin and Kazooie are owned by Microsoft He would have to go to Nintendo to the for the okay and to make sure that Nintendo would want the characters in Obviously he does that with every third party. He still gets needs to to, to get the thumbs up from Nintendo for the third party characters and even some of I believe because Nintendo still has to set everything up and Nintendo is the one that basically pays for these characters when it comes to Benjamin and Kazooie, I very much doubt that Sakurai would go to them and say, we want this, or I want this. And Nintendo would just be like, okay, go ahead, here's the money, go deal with them. It, it, since it's a, a game or a character owned by a, a technically speaking rival company, Nintendo would want more than just like the character. Because technically speaking, they would be promoting a character that would never show up in a Nintendo game. And sh or a Nintendo f a console again. You could say, oh, that could be the same thing for Square Enix or for, for, for Cloud. Cloud is never going to appear on Nintendo systems and Final Fantasy most likely won't. Yes, but Square still has games coming out on Nintendo platforms. Be it as they may with stock issues, but they are still getting released. Octopath just released. With Microsoft, you have Minecraft and what else? You have nothing else. So I believe that Nintendo would most likely want something else in return outside of just basically promoting a free character outside of obviously the money but then again most characters and most of the franchises in smash and most of the companies in smash outside of nintendo will get games on nintendo systems either eventually or already or were already being done that's just my feeling and nintendo would not just be like oh yeah no we don't we don't like look at the nes classic the nes classic and the snes classic do include final fantasy and Castlevania. Funnily enough, they are in Smash. Same thing can be said for, uh, what is it? What's the other character's name I'm forgetting? Uh, third party, third party. Uh, uh, Namco Bandai. Does Namco Bandai have any th any games on the... That doesn't, that doesn't matter. When the NES Classic launched was after Smash Brothers, after Cloud. So the deal could have been easily struck. Now, we haven't heard anything about the SNES uh, N64 Classic. So maybe that's what Nintendo gets in return, they can get the Rare games from the N64 in the N64 Classic. That would be pretty neat and that way I could see Nintendo doing it. But either way, if, but that, that's also going with the, the, the position that Microsoft would be okay with it. Yes, Phil Spencer said, yeah, I want it, but Phil Spencer is not Mr. Microsoft, you know? He's not the guy that makes all the decisions or the guy that says like, this is happening because I say it's happening. No. He has to deal with whatever Microsoft, the higher-ups at Microsoft tell them. If they tell them, no, we're not allowing you to, then they're not allowed to. That's not happening. So there's a lot of things going into it, but hey, before Smash Ultimate was revealed, I also said Snake was very unlikely. And we got him, mostly because I didn't believe Konami would ever allow him to, to leave his cage. Or even that Sakurai would, or that, not Sakurai, but Kojima would say no. Uh, and Sakurai would obviously not go against the wishes of his friend. But that's beside the point. That will be it for this video regarding the Super Smash Bros. Ballot and how it might influence the Smash Ballot. So tell me in the comment section which one of the characters from the ballot do you think is going to go into Smash? Do you think 
the Smash Ballot has have at all influenced the roster picks for Super Smash Bros. as of right now. Uh, and which characters do you want? And tell me if I missed any character. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. I've been the Legend of the S. I'll see you guys next time.